possess or lack the uh, the karmic causes and conditions necessary for realizing Shinji. Yeah. Yeah, that was... And um, there's a famous passage in uh, the beginning of Shinran's Kyogyo Shinsho, which is his uh, sort of master work that contains the the entire teaching of Jodo Shinshu. And uh, in fact, the beginning of Jodo Shinshu as a, as a school is actually identified when to the year in which Shinran Shonin completed Kyogyo Shinsho. And uh, the passage goes like this, it's at the very beginning, and I think you're probably very familiar with it. But he says, uh, he writes, Ah, hard to encounter, even in many lifetimes, as the decisive cause of birth, Amida's universal vow. And hard to realize, even in myriads of kalpas, as pure Shinjin, that is true and real. If you should come to realize Shinjin, rejoice at the conditions from the distant past that have brought it about. Hmm. So this uh, conditions from the distant past, or... Uh, Shuku in in Japanese, the original Japanese means kind of like stored causes or conditions. Yeah. Um, yeah. And your question is is if if we have to uh, if these conditions are a requirement to realize Shinjin, how can we know if we have these conditions or not? Is that correct? Is that yeah. how? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. question. Yeah. So I asked Kobai Sensei about this, and I uh, said, well, how can we know uh, if we have these conditions or not? And uh, Kobai Sensei, Sensei's answer was, well, nobody can know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if I wanted, I want to add to that one, actually one of the, you know, uh, 10 powers of, a, of an enlightened, a fully enlightened Buddha is the knowledge of his past lives, right? Yeah. And also knowledge of other beings' past lives and past karmic conditions. So by definition, that knowledge is something that we, you and I, as, as unenlightened individuals, un ordinary unenlightened people, uh, can't have. We can't really know, you know what our own past karma is or what the past karma of other people is. Um, so that is the answer to your question there. Um, hmm. And do you have any thought about that? Let me- Yeah, my to... question is, is there, some, is there something in the writing, something in the teachings hmm. that sort of refers to, you know, I know we can't know that as unlike beings, we can't really know the the, the, mm. the true you know aspect of our karmic causes and everything yeah. is there is there things is there indicators mm. like is there some kind of indicators in your like if you like things like even me um being drawn to pure land mm. and jodo shinshu yeah that an indicator of those past yeah i mean from the past, or being willing to work with a teacher mm. at the different times i have is that an indicator yeah. you know what i mean like is does that some that right. whatever degree of that openness is that an indicator of of the good causes from the past even if you don't have shinjin yet even if you have yeah. even, given, even if even and if i would say install shinjin in within you that, yeah you see what right. I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would say definitely. I mean, if you have, if you feel a kind of strong connection or tr attraction to, uh, you know, this path, Jodo Shinshu, then uh, that's an indication, I think, that you have some, you know, uh, and one important thing to note, and this is something Kobai Sensei said too, is this shuku in, this past causes and conditions, this isn't something that, um, is the product of our own calculation and working. This this shuku in this past causes and conditions are is the working of other power. Mm -hmm. So it's 
it's not things that we did in the past on our own power it's it's amidas working on on us over innumerable yeah 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 Yeah. yeah. okay yeah yeah makes sense so and well and to answer your question i think yeah sorry Mm, go ahead go ahead so even to have the proclivity to be drawn to it yeah even to whatever degree Mm. That's what I'm asking. Is there something in the writings that kind of says this yeah. may, may be evidence of your mm. you know, the work of Amita in your past lives, the, your, the past good from the past? Mm. Well, I don't think I'm not aware of any particular passage that like specifically says, you know, if, uh, you know, this particular feeling or this particular yeah. action is is an indication. But I do think that people if you are drawn to this teaching then that's an indication that you may have have some you know past connection right. to it at some point and i also think you know the fact that we're sitting here talking as human beings is already yeah. a rare thing right <laughs> true, like true. statistically it's it's nearly impossible and it's interesting shakyamuni buddha actually has a parable i think you probably know about the turtle in the in the ocean have you heard of this parable at all might have i can't i can't remember for sure i might remember when you start okay well let me try to tell it off the top of my head and it's basically there's a turtle in the ocean and uh he comes up for air like every yeah so many million years and there's a little there's a wooden ring floating on the ocean and the, 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 the chance or the probability of being born in the human life as compared to if that turtle came up and stuck his neck through that wooden ring. <laughs> yeah. I think you probably yeah. remember that. Yes, story, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, I do remember that now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, it makes, yeah, that we're actually born as humans. Yeah, is, is a, rare, right. yeah, a rare thing in itself. Which, so like that, that's something I thought about you know, not only to be worn as a human, but I've had mm. the opportunity to encounter the Buddha Dharma just in general. Like that yeah. alone is a massive thing, isn't it? That yeah, like it's rare to be born as a human, but then even rarer to encounter the Dharma in some meaningful way. Right. That actually made me impacted my life and I wanted to know everything about it. And do you know yeah. what I mean? And oh, yeah. In fact, the uh, the San Kie, the Three Refuges text that is uh, recited by all the major schools of Buddhism, at least in in Japan and I think around the world too, says uh, starts with rare. You know, rare is it to be born into human life, and now we are living it. And even more rare it is to encounter the teaching of the Buddha, and now we're hearing it. So that just like you said, you know, that in itself, and speaking from my own experience, I mean, I was born in a average American family. No one in my family has any interest in Buddhism whatsoever, had ever heard of Buddhism. <laughs> yeah, same yeah, sorry. <laughs> and, uh, and yet I somehow, you know, I started studying Buddhism on my own time when I was in college and I felt a strong attraction to this teaching and the more I learned about Jodo Shinshu you know the more compelling it was to me and I came to a point where you know this guy Shinron Shonin really found something you know I mean and he found what he found I think was you know that a true the truth of you know a a uh true buddhist you know religion and um so that's kind of strange to think about too is like how it's kind of inexplicable how i out of my entire family would end up you know with this attraction to buddhism right it's kind of strange (laughs) yeah exactly i mean my my family is like fundamentalists like fundamentalists you know in in american styles yeah kind of yeah. you know what I mean? So mine, mine are too. My family is exactly <laughs> the same. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they've 
changed, you know, some of them have changed and, you know, and yeah, yeah. married into other things well, and do other things, but it's, but generally that's yeah. what, so yeah, it's weird that, you know, um, yeah. that I would, even, and in fact that they were, would be vehemently against it, you know, like against any other. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, but yeah. You're always, going to hell and all of that kind of thing, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but, so yeah, so that gives me confidence that, um, well, at least I have, like, I don't have, I don't have the, I don't believe I have the merit to become a Buddha. Like I don't have that kind of, I don't have any of those causes to be, to have the ability to do self power practice, to become a Buddha. I just, I, that mm. I, there's, the, well, I won't say it, there is some of those shadow of doubts, which I'll get to later, but mostly I don't really like when I'm in a, like <laughs> when, when the mo monkeys aren't raging in my mind, I'm like, <laughs> Yeah. you're a complete spiritual idiot like calm down you know what i mean um but the 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 so but i but i but it gives me confidence that like i think okay at least i've had the karmic causes and conditions to be born as a human and to encounter the buddha dharma and to be able to mm -hmm. encounter like pure land and jodo shinshu which mm -hmm. i think is even rarer like that people yeah especially in the west are going to yeah, I think so. I mean, even among those who are interested in Buddhism, I'd say that people who really encounter, engage with Jodo Shinshu in a, in a meaningful way are probably very, very rare. So, yeah. Mm. The fact that you are interested in this path and are listening, you know, to it is, in my opinion, really all the indication you need that, you know, those, that shuku in those past causes of, of right. other power working in your, in your entire existence is, is there. I mean, you know, it, for me, at least I, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't really overthink it. I mean, you know, you're, you're here <laughs> and this path is, is already kind of calling to you. So, you know. Okay. Yeah. That, and that's kind of what, Okay, that's kind of what I sort of need, kind of needed to to hear from that from that question mm -hmm. was that's what that's what I was, you know, yeah. If I didn't have some kind, if there were, I wouldn't be do, doing this, you know, it doesn't come right, it, right. That. So if I, do you see what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The I mean, it's true that. Uh, the uh you know shinran does indicate that if if you these uh the shukuin you know if it's lacking then um and also rinyo shonin also talks about shuku zin which is uh stored good from past life you know but again that's not that's not our good that's the good of the peer good of the buddha working on us you know yeah yeah. Um, it's something that we receive not something we're creating you know, not something we have to go up go out and you know I'm going to do good things today yes. so that I will have Shinji in the future yeah. <laughs> I'm going to create yeah I'm going to create good yeah, yeah. Uh, causes from the past too yeah yeah but I have also heard um um mention of mm. that doing deep listening you know working with a good teacher deep mm. listening can that can become a part part of a good cause from the past to open you further is that is that right something along that line to, 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 no. To no. no 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 <laughs> no and uh, well okay. and the reason is um, the, uh, Kobai Sensei has a passage in one of his books where he says this is um, the listening is, is not uh, <clears throat> the reason we can receive Shinjin through, through listening through, uh, the Japanese is Chomon but through listening to the Dharma is because of the Buddha's power so it's because of other power which is working Okay. And is added and is added to our listening. It's not, it's not that 
well, I'm listening. And because I listened, therefore, that's a good yes. cause yeah. that will enable me to get Shinji. Yes, I got that's, you. That's uh, not the right, the correct uh, oh, power. way of looking at it in my, in my view. So the listening itself is actually, um, you know, it's like when you see, uh, let's say you're taking a walk and you see a full moon reflected in a, in a clear lake. And uh, what you think is when you see it is, wow, that's beautiful. But you didn't have to like think, okay, you know, this is beautiful, so I should be impressed, right? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a natural response, Thanks. right? So in my opinion, and Kobai Sensei says this very clearly, actually, maybe I should try to find the passage. Um, it is in one of his books. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up here. But we uh we shouldn't he says that we shouldn't um think of the hearing that we do as being the the reason we get shinji if that makes sense right so it's not like we're piling up uh good causes through Merit. hearing the dharma that's going to eventually Listening points <laughs> produce changing does it does that make sense like what i'm saying there yeah it does it does yeah it's not it's not like we're, we're yeah we're piling like a listening points like you know that we've we've earned we've achieved by yeah exactly it's not like you know uh, uh, uh an assignment in uh college where you know you have to <laughs> listen yeah. to so many lectures to pass yeah. the course right <laughs> But I think in some way, probably unconsciously, or my mind is somehow at times construing that, mm. you know, I'm, you know. Yeah, uh, I, get I think we do because we, our minds are constantly, like you said, the monkey mind, you know, we are always calculating. How can we, what can I do to get what I want, you know? And yeah. with, when we hear that Xinjiang is a thing that we can get, and then we think, you know, well, and it's, if we listen, we, we will receive Xinjing. Then we think, oh, well, if I just listen a lot, <clears throat> then I'm going to get Xinjing, you know, and yeah. that's kind of is um, <clears throat> not, it's counterproductive. It's the calculating mind. It's the calculating mind always at work, trying to, trying to figure it out, trying to. Yes. Mean that I'm doing it somehow. Uh, yeah 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 and um let me let me see uh uh where is this mm. <clears throat> i might uh i might not be able to find this passage right now but i will um <clears throat> I'll send it to you afterward if I can't oh. find it. Yeah. But I'm still, um, I'm still just reading. I'm still mm. reading through um, understanding Jodo Shinshu. I haven't gotten. Oh, that. okay. I find it great. Great. I read slowly. Number one. Number two, the holidays were. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Busy. Uh, and also, I'm used to reading Joshua Adrian Curlia's works. Oh. It's a very different writing style. He's very, very simplified, like everything. So I find it's a very different, like Ko Ko Kobai Sensei, it's simple, but it's very different writing mm. style. So it's, it's just, I'm finding adjusting to it. I'm yeah. still. Well, Kobai, Kobai Sensei is uh, actually, even his Japanese is extremely academic and hard to understand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. he he is a scholar. Um, a scholar. And, uh, That's what I mean. It's he's been writing yeah. in a scholarly way, even right. though it's simple. You know, even though it's a, it's like simplified scholarly way, it's still, yeah. you know. And so it's yeah. I so the combination of reading slowly, I have a sort of delayed assimilation thing going on that may or may not be some kind of specific learning <laughs> difficulty that was never that was undiagnosed, but 
anyway don't don't worry about it you know just do it at your own pace yeah. is what yeah. i would say and then make make a note make notes of like questions you have or thoughts you know that's a really good uh way of uh of you know uh listening Ch chomo and deep listening so and uh, i'll try to find that passage and send it to you i i do think it's okay. in uh the understanding judo shinshu but so here's here's so with deeply listening uh, deeply mm. hearing yeah working with someone to to do that um what's the attitude you should take okay because yeah, i'm reading it i'm trying to understand you know i understand like the i do understand the basic in my head of right the like yeah you know, probably a bit further than than, than just the basics but mm. how far has it gone into sunk in it's probably sunk in a lot lot more than i think and yeah. a lot more than like you know three years ago five years ago right pain but like what's the attitude when you're reading it like you know there's so there's this part of me that's like this is the dharma mm. this is the way this is I, I must read this and understand it and <laughs> it. you know yeah. what I mean? there's, the there's that urgency and i think probably from other yeah from the buddhism that is like, like that but when you read some of the readings even of the dharma masters of jodo shinshu mm. there is this like you know, this is the, you know, um, and so there's part of it is that kind of feels like I should be mm. reading it with this earnest, you know, uh, you know, mm. on the one hand, and on the other hand, I think, well, it's going to go in. <laughs> so let Amita do the work. You see what I mean? And I'm not sure. Yeah. Is that like, is that what, what is, the, what's the, atti like, what is the attitude or no attitude I right. should have? listening well, when I'm reading, i mean literally mm -hmm. either reading the re mm. or listening to them you know recorded how what's the do, do you see what i'm saying like mm -hmm. yeah and i think um well first of all reverence i think is important so you know when you are approaching the, the any sacred text and uh in in our case you know the suit the three peer lands sutras and the writings of the seven uh, pure land masters uh, and uh, Shinran Chonin's own writings are all, you know, uh, the sacred, the foundational, you know, texts of Jodo Shinshu, right? And also uh, Rinyo Shonin's letters in, if you're in the, Hong, the Honganji tradition, right? Um, so, you know, in, uh, in uh, Japanese, uh, let me see if I can demonstrate uh you may be aware of this as well but in the services before the uh uh whenever you this is my uh my uh shinshu satan so my it's the the jodo shinshu bible <laughs> um basically this has in japanese all of our uh texts our sacred texts so in whenever we we learn this in uh uh Bukyo Gakuin, um, Whenever you are in a service and you're about you're going to read from us a, a text, a scripture. Um, whenever you take the book, you always um, it's called receiving it. So you you basically lift the book up and then hold it up, and you don't you don't actually need to touch it to your head. That's that's kind of strange, but um, uh, you lift it up and then. Mm. um sort of bow your head towards towards the book and uh the meaning of that it's you know it's a ritual right but the meaning of it is this is this contains the words of the buddha you know which are which is the medicine of the dharma that the buddha shakyamuni buddha uh gave you know freely to us uh living beings and I am now encountering that teaching, mm -hmm. you know. So it's a, it really is, you know, it's reverence. It's like, it's exactly the same, I think, in Christian churches or some Christian churches. I think they like, when before they read the Gospels, they like hold it up, you know. And uh, so 
I said all that to say that I think reverence, approaching the text with reverence is, is an important thing. Um, so in that sense, you should probably think, you know, this is not like a novel, you know, it's not a Stephen King book. It's, <laughs> it's, it's the Dharma, right? You know, it is, it is, uh, it contains the truth that can benefit me in a, in a spiritual sense, right? Um, and then the other part is what you mentioned, which is uh, let the let the text speak to you, you know, instead of trying to always insert your viewpoint or your uh, idea, right? <clears throat> let it speak to you and um, sort of, it's like, uh, you know, <clears throat> That basking in the sunshine, you know, <laughs> you just enjoy it, you know. Uh, Rin Yoshonin actually made a, a point of that. He said, uh, the working of Amida's light is like when you've got a pile of laundry and it, and it dries in the sun. So it's like the sun warms the laundry and just dries it from top to bottom. Sitting there, yeah, it's still just, yeah. Yeah, the light is doing all the yeah. Work. So let let the light work. You know, this would be my recommendation. I mean, you and don't don't go because there are some people and teachers and and priests and monks out there who are uh, more like um, well, and especially in non Jodo Shinshu Pierland schools. You know, you have to you know, say the Nimbutsu so many times every day, you have, you need to get up early in the morning and, you know, <laughs> meditate and read the sutras and, and we don't, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you want to do that, if that's a natural way for you to hear the Dharma, then that's great, but don't um, turn it into like something that you don't look forward to doing <laughs> right yeah a kind too, of practice right? some kind of self -power yeah yeah practice yeah so that, so it's more like when i hear because i've heard deep listening or listening deeply translated as deep hearing mm. is that right and that almost kind of makes sense to me that it's like you're like listening like listening deeply it's still like you're listening so you're listening it's more of a you, you have mm. sounds, you're going to hear it. Do you know what I mean? Right. It's not. Yeah, like, yeah. But then there's active listening. You know, you have the other thing where you do, you actively listen to someone when they're talking to. Right. Try to understand what, you know what I mean? And yeah. I think I don't really need to do active listening. I just need to hear it. Is that? Yeah. Well, in, in it's on more, the one hand. It, more the light doing it than me. Oh, I've got to understand this I've you know right got to take yeah. it all in as and absorb it as much as I possibly can do, do you see what yeah. I mean that... mm -hmm. yeah I I think you're I think you're on the right track there I mean I think that it's I want to say that this is also a topic that might come up in the understanding Jodo Shinshu by Kobai right. Sensei um I haven't read that book in a, in a while so I'll have to see if I can find a passage for you but um yeah, the the difference between you know listening and hearing, right? There's a there's a um, uh, famous passage in the Bible, right? Faith cometh by hearing. Yeah, yeah, yes. Right. yeah. Right, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure you've heard it before. <laughs> um, but the hearing in this case in Jodo Shinshu is actually a little bit different. Um, than that concept of of the relationship of hearing and faith in Christianity, and the reason we actually there's a term for it. It's called, um, <clears throat> and this this topic might be a bit too broad to really dive into yeah, uh, at this time. But I, I, as long as you're aware of this concept, I think that's a good point to start. It's called um, in Japanese. It's called mon soku shin, which means Mon is uh, the kanji for hearing, so to hear, hearing. Soku means equal or is, and then shin is shinjin, so faith. So in Jodo Shinshu, 
hearing the vow, hearing the name of Amida, true hearing, not not our own self-powered, you know, I've got to listen, but actually, you know, the other power hearing of mm. the name is is itself faith. That that is what faith is. So it's not that you hear and then you you get faith. That true hearing and uh, Kobai Sensei, you'll get to this in the in understanding Jojo Shinshu because he talks. He has a really good explanation of this. That hearing itself, hearing without doubt, doubt so without the mind of calculation and doubt. That is itself what faith is. That is faith. So that is Shinjin. And that Shinjin is not our calculating mind of self-power, but Amida's mind, which is given you know, to us in the form of uh, joyful, well, it's translated joyful faith, but that doesn't mean you, know, you have to uh, dance, <laughs> dance around. Um, but um, so that the one mind of, of faith is itself what the true hearing is. So that's an important difference between, right. you know, the, the Christian idea, I guess, of, you know. That it comes. And, uh, yeah, in Jodo Shinshu. Whereas I suppose we're like, okay, so when you truly hear, then you, that is, so, uh, okay, so so if I'm so is the pro process of listening deeply mm. is partly what just opens you for for like it, is it partly that that opens you to Amita's light? Is that the? the yeah, I mean, I would say that you you can't. Uh, I really want to find this passage from that, Kobai Sensei because. Okay. Perfectly addresses what your question is. I'm right now. Yeah, okay. um, give me just a moment. Let me see if I can find this. I think it's uh, uh what is it? Uh, added maybe. Um, because he exactly addresses the question you're asking, and it's it's a great question. <laughs> um. Because that's what it always, yeah. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm. Kind that's of what it always seemed right like now. to me when I when I work when I was working with Paul Roberts and reading Paul Roberts' works and working with Joshua Sensei. Mm. Um, it, that's what it seemed like that, you know, working with a good teacher and mm. uh, you know, or a good friend on the path and you know and and listening deeply was kind of part of the process of becoming more open to the dharma more open to the light like kind of like, right like not we're not we're not the light the light is what does it but like through deep mm. listening <clears throat> i'm opening the curtain yeah. to let the yeah. light yeah i i mean i think that that you know to put it another way like if you don't you know if you want to get a suntan but you don't go outside, you know, that's going to be hard to do, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah some Something. steps you need to take first. <laughs> I mean, in there, in, in the, there's a passage, very famous passage. Kobai Sensei also um, remarked on this one. Uh, you know, even though the entire world were filled with flame pass through that fire to hear the buddha's name is a famous you know passage and uh so in a sense i mean you know you can't just not do anything and then <laughs> you yeah. know i mean there, there <laughs> is a, just, like you have to right. make it, like you, you no matter what you you need to do this like that to me does suggest some activeness there that you, you know, that, you know, walk through yeah. the flame to. Well, even like Shinran Shonin, you know, he realized on Mount Hiei when he was practicing in the Tendai school 
that he had not been able to achieve that the fruit of that practice you know and so what did he do i mean he didn't just give up and do nothing he mm -hmm. he left the mountain he went to rokakudo which is a temple in kyoto and uh he basically you know uh did a for many nights where he prayed to uh <clears throat> canon uh and i'm forgetting the english kanon bosatsu but it's avalokiteshvara kanon bosatsu but um and then um kanon bosatsu actually appeared to him as shotoku taishi which is the uh prince who's revered in a lot of Japanese schools as the kind of the founder of Buddhism in Japan and told him to go visit uh, Honen Shoni, right? So, you know, it's not like Shinran did absolutely nothing and then all of this happened, right? I mean, yeah. he was <laughs> seeking, right? So that's important, I think. Definitely. I, yeah, I definitely, definitely see that. Um, any luck finding that passage? Uh, you know what? I'm going to have to look at for it that. and okay. send it to you afterward. Unfortunately, that's not that's fine. So it's kind so. of like so. I'm on. I mean, for so obviously, yeah. Reverence, you know, having reverence is, you know, that's obviously mm. do if you're reading the teaching. Mm you know the, the the sutras or the you know um uh and you there is a there's a there is an active element to it you just have to know it's not self-will that it's not self-power i should say that's gonna mm. that's gonna yeah. say that's you just have to remember like okay yes i'm going to be doing these things um right but if that's not what's going to save me do, do right, 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 right. Like, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That's just the thing to remember. <laughs> so do it. But as, even that, don't yeah. don't overthink it. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> that's the trap that we always fall into. Yeah, yeah. Because that can become a kind of calculation too. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do see that. Um, okay. Um, let me, I would like to move on to a couple other sure. of your questions. Yeah. And um, let's see. So I think we addressed your questions about the 12 step, you know, program. And, and I think yeah. you resolved that. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. And uh, your, your question, I think one of your questions was, um, well, some sutras talk about Amida entering Nirvana. And then Kanon Bosatsu, Avalokiteshvara succeeding him as the next Buddha in the Pure Land. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and um, that question, that's not really something that I think Kobai Sensei would, it's not really his field of expertise. So, right. but, and I don't know a whole lot about that either. I'm aware that there is a sutra, of course, that talks about that. But, um, my feeling would be um, the larger sutra in Jodo Shinshu, mind you. I mean, I'm talking from the perspective of Jodo Shinshu right now. Um, and for Shinran Shonin, it's the larger sutra that is the, the pure and unfiltered truth, so to speak. Okay. And there are other pure land sutras, including, you know, the, the meditation <laughs> sutra and the smaller sutra and those you know there are many 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 in fact i believe there are more sutras dedicated to amida buddha and the mahayana canon than like any other buddha i think i mean i've heard that <laughs> the amount of times he's just mentioned even in yeah sutra. yeah 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 it's incredible yeah. really yeah. <laughs> even in the long of sutra but he is you know kind of you know yeah right he is the like ultimate buddha really isn't it so it yeah sort of yeah true that you know, well <clears throat> yeah rinyo shonin says that uh you know amida buddha is the original buddha and the original teacher of all <laughs> other buddhas so um and part of that is uh 
the 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 talk who said that sorry shinron said that rin yoshoni rin yoshoni okay sorry yeah. i got it. yeah and yeah. um <clears throat> i would say that a sutra in which avalokiteshvara is you know it's saying that amita will enter in nirvana and avalokiteshvara will take over that's probably was written in a context in which that was the 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 thought right of that particular period or time or place but from a shinshu perspective that would be regarded as a provisional teaching okay not not the ultimate truth so um well for one thing from the point of view of the ultimate truth in the lotus sutra in, in particular is teaches this i believe too is the buddha doesn't actually enter nir nirvana right the buddha is always yeah yeah. active working right beyond the appearance he and in the larger sutra this is um uh talked about too you know the the buddha shows the appearance of entering nirvana but in reality he works endlessly and it's people you know who aren't who aren't haven't reached that level of, of a bodhisattva's attainment who think that the buddha has passed out of this world and it's gone but for an enlightened being, that isn't the case. You know, mm -hmm. the, the Buddha is, is constantly working. So I think the brief answer to that question would be, it's probably a provisional teaching in some other, you know, Peerland Sutra that has, was written for a specific audience, you know, to, to address what um, they were conceptualizing okay. about okay. the teaching. I guess skillful means type of thing. Is that yeah yeah I mean it's it's but you know in the entire Buddhist canon there's a lot of stuff that's written there <laughs> and, and not all of it has relevance to yeah uh, uh, Jodo Shinshu I mean it's um the emphasis in Jodo Shinshu really is on the three you know those three sutras and then um, so that would be the answer to that question uh, in my this is my um, viewpoint okay it's not sort of relevant to Jodo Jinju teaching, focus on the larger sutra and that that's a provisional teaching. Yeah. Yeah, okay. it's specifically Jodo Shinshu has a concept of Amida that is different from <laughs> other schools, <laughs> even other Peerland schools. And um, this is kind of, this is a bit, I was doing some research, but it's it's a bit complicated. <laughs> it's a complex topic. so. Um, but briefly, uh, if you read the larger sutra, the idea you get is that there was a monk or a king who became a monk. He heard the teaching of, you know, Lokas Vararaja Buddha, and uh, he became a monk named Dharma uh, Bhikshu Dharmakara, Hozo Bosatsu in Japanese. And he practiced, he made vows, he fulfilled those vows, and he became. Amida Buddha, right? That's the narr the story as it's given in the larger sutra. But Shinran Shonin has an added, an additional insight, which is that um, <clears throat> Amida can't can't just be limited to what the Buddha that Hozo Bosatsu became. Amida is actually larger in terms of time. Um, Shinran says that Amida is actually the eternal Buddha. Yeah. So Amida actually <clears throat> took the took the form of of Dharmakara uh, Bodhisattva and and became Amida in order to fulfill that vow and fulfill make the vow power, you know, something that could save us, oh. right? <clears throat> And there's a lot of passages that deal with this in the in the the scriptures. And um, thinking of I Lotus, think uh, coming to mind <laughs> from go the, ahead. Lotus Sutra keeps coming to mind during all of this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lotus. Well, that's and, like Lotus Sutra, that's almost like what the second half of it's all about is. You know, right. I am an eternal Buddha. I am. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the, anyway, yeah. Sorry. And um, that, that is important because 
I think you have questions about the relation between Lotus Sutra and Jodo Shinshu, right? Yeah, and and the teachings about you know, like you know, the five wisdom Buddhas, like the Adi Buddha, the five wisdom Buddha Buddhas, hmm. and, you know, Amida being one of them, you know. Um, right. And then yeah. that to me that t- does tie into the Lotus Sutra. But anyway, but the thing is, like it's things that I know are way beyond my understanding to do you know what i mean but it's still there you know so like yeah no i think you should but i think if it's a if it's an issue that you have a question about you should resolve that question i mean in my opinion um otherwise it'll always be like yeah you know nagging you like a little a little nag you know buzzing in your ear literally years yeah yeah exactly (laughs) so one thing i want to share with you about the lotus sutra and its relationship to uh well the pure land teaching generally and jodo shinshu in particular is um and this is something that is talked about in uh by rinyo shonin and also kakunyo shonin who is the third (laughs) monshu or third head priest of the honganji school um, and it, I think it was common knowledge amongst Buddhists at the time, actually. Although I'm not, I'm not sure what Nichiren Shonin had to say about this, but uh, but um, the Buddha taught the Lotus Sutra over a period of I think eight years, according to the the sutras, and um, and he was teaching it on Mount the same mountain, the Mount Rajagra, right? Yeah. As, as the large was the larger <laughs> sutra or the meditation? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or yeah. One of them. The, right. The med- and I think yeah, it's the Places. same mountain as the larger sutra. Yeah, but um, he was teaching it, and um, then what happened was the tragedy at of uh, King Bimbasara and Prince Ajata Satru and Queen Videhi, the family, the royal family, basically of that country and um that was you know a big a huge terrible (laughs) mess right (laughs) and and, um the buddha when when queen videhi you know she requested shakyamuni she basically was at the bottom you know she had reached rock bottom basically yeah and she just implored shakyamuni to you know save me help me at that time, the Buddha was preaching the Lotus Sutra. And yeah. He, yeah. he stopped preaching the Lotus Sutra to, and he went to the castle, you know, the, the sutra says he flew through the air, you know, he went straight to the castle and, um, and taught the Pure Land, Amidas, the teaching of Amidas Pure Land and other power to Queen Videhi. And what that means, so you might wonder, like, what does that mean? Like, he was preaching the Lotus Sutra, and then he, he goes and preaches the Pure Land teaching. And according to Kakunyo Shonin, and this is a question I had, he says, um, uh, just one minute. <clears throat> um, He says, the Lotus Sutra, uh, which is credited by schools in the path of uh, sages as being the authoritative text, you know, it's famous for claiming that it is the final, you know, the the ultimate text, the ultimate sutra that Shakyamuni preached, right? Yeah. And and, uh, Kakunya Shonin says, that sutra, the Lotus Sutra and the present Pierland teachings are exactly the same in essence. And he goes on to say, the five tragic incidents at the Royal Palace were uh, occurred during the eight years that the Buddha taught the Lotus Sutra. And at the time that the Buddha disappeared from the assembly at Rajagra and appeared at the Royal Palace, he uh, gave a sermon on other power to Queen Videhi. And then he says, the fundamental reason for all Buddhas appearing in this world from Kaitoku up to Shakyamuni was to lay the foundation for Amida's one teaching everywhere. 
And so um, basically what he's saying is the one vehicle teaching that Shakyamuni delivered in the Lotus Sutra is really the same in essence as Jodo Shinshu, the Pure Land teaching. And what Shakyamuni was doing, this is my interpretation, he took the teaching of the Lotus Sutra, the one vehicle teaching, and applied it, gave it to Queen Videhi in the form of the Pure Land teaching and to teach other power in Amida's uh, Pure Land, right? And the working of Amida's vow. That's in, according to Shinran, you know, the, the true intention of Shakyamuni's appearing in the world is to teach Amida's original vow. <clears throat> not to reveal the Lotus Sutra. So that's that's a point right. of difference between Jodo yeah. Shinshu and Nichiren Shonin's teaching, right? Or Tendai, yeah, Tendai. Yeah, or Tendai. Tendai, yeah, teachings, yeah. Um, yeah, they have the five periods. That, that's something that yeah. trips too. So <laughs> we'll, we'll <laughs> talk about that at some point because they, the, the Mapo is in their teachings as well, you know? Um, yeah, teach- yeah, yeah. Sutra are very, you know, so it's anyway, we'll we'll talk about that at some point. I, I'm getting mindful that it's, you know, uh I know we started like sort of Yeah, I think we're already over an hour, right? Are we? Let me see. Well, it's an hour now. So um yeah. But what any thoughts or ideas uh, so um, what we've discussed, you know, this time, like what what do you what is your thoughts or was that helpful at all or definitely you, you know helpful you stuff. have more questions be, well it's it's very helpful it's very good to be having a dharma discussion um after several months of not having any because of because i left the uh, me to g uh, ah, okay i was very active in that i had weekly weekly study um sessions with with josho sensei um ah. but to other Dharma brothers, usually, like it, it grew into this weekly, you know, mm. it was just, I was just wanting to do that with him as a, but then it kind of grew when we had like, you know, this week, and then plus we would have twice a month, we would have Dharma meetings, you know, it was all on Zoom, it was all on Zoom, uh, we'd have uh, Dharma, you know, Dharma, um, yeah, little Dharma service, and then, you know, a little Jodo Shinju service, and then a, and a Dharma mm. discussion. Um, and uh, so that was pretty, so like at least six times a month, I was having Dharma discussions. And That's then, a lot. <laughs> yeah. And then like, and then like, um, I, I had this YouTube channel that I was really active with, and I was like interviewing people from mm. the Sangha and stuff like that. So I was having additional uh. things with those people. So it's just nice, first of all, just to be having a Dharma discussion again after being in the desert. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you're being yeah. in the desert of the real for, you know. Well, it's life. great. I, uh, I, it's a great opportunity for me too, because, you know, I spent, you know, I spent 10 years and then three, three years um, studying, you know, sort of formally studying Jodo Shinshu as a, as a, in, a student with uh, Chuo Bukyo Gakuin in Tokyo in their correspondence course. But it's all in Japanese. So yeah. it's actually good. It's kind of interesting for me to have to, um, you know, inter- interpret this, what I've learned into English. You know, it's, it's a good exercise. And it's, it's a way for me to also kind of come into, come into touch, you know, keep and stay in touch with you know, what I've learned in the teaching, so. And I want to emphasize too, I mean, we've only scratched the surface, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. and one, yeah. one issue I have with, you know, you don't, you want to be careful um, not to make things complicated because, you know, this is a teaching for people like you and me who can't uh, save our, you know, behinds for anything, right? Yeah. We, we don't have, uh, you know, Capacity. But at the same time, Jodo Shinshu the, the, in the, the teaching is, it's so vast. It's like the ocean, you know, and, and it, the, the more you go into it, the, 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 the better and the deeper and the, the more interesting it gets or so I have found. So, 
it's not an intimidating thing. It's like a, it's an inviting thing. It's like it gets, it really does get better and better. You know. <laughs> well, I have many so. questions. There's so much I do want to know. So I, yeah, I figured it would just be over time. We would discuss. I'm not, you know, I'm not like I have to have all these questions answered now. You know, it's you know, although right, a few right. times <laughs> I have to say. I, it does well, feel like, what I'll do is like, um, that's what I think maybe next time we'll talk about is the emotional part of it where I just get so frustrated sometimes or do you know what I mean with it and impatient, yeah, yeah. angry and jealous of people that have Shinjin and do you, know uh, I mean? yeah. do you know what I mean? All these kinds we can of we can discuss that too. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah. great I think there's a lot of great uh, words or uh, resources I can probably find. Um, for you there too so i mean it's it's all you know it's pretty much all in here yeah. <laughs> you know at, at some point or another it's just i does don't that, have the is, does that have like all the writings of shinran yeah what is yeah. that book shinran and the three pure land sutras and yeah Rinyo. and um rinyo shonin and then also zone kaku shonin and kakunyo shonin which were um head priests of the Honganji between Shinran and Rinyo. And they actually have some really good writings too as well that are interesting to read. But the main content is, um, uh, uh, if you can see the green tabs. Yes, yes. The green tabs is Shinran Shonin's writing. Oh, cool. Did you do so, that? Uh, Was that, is that how it's, how, did you do the tabs? Yeah. Let me see if I can open it up for you. So this is the. Uh, do you do that yourself, or does it come that way? Does the book come that way with the tabs? Uh, I I got these separately because I wanted to be able. It doesn't come with the tabs, but I wanted to use them. So it's Jodo Shinshu Satan, and then this this first part, and this is actually really useful because at the bottom it is all in Japanese, but at the bottom of the page there's annotations, so everything is annotated. So if there's like old Japanese words that nobody understands anymore. They're, they're explained down here. So it's really useful. But um, yeah, this is basically from here to here. This section is all Shinran Shonin's writing. And then yeah. the largest part of that is uh, Kyogyo Shinsho. Ah, okay. Right here. Ken, Ken Jodo Shinjitsu Kyogyo Shomonui. It's the full. A long title. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a long title. Long <laughs> Kyogyo Shinsho is a lot. That was years. literally the first thing I read. Like people laugh when I tell them that. Really? Like, yeah. That was the first thing for Jodo Shinsho. <laughs> yeah, I read but it pretty early for me, on too. It makes sense because I have to have things comprehensively. I can't, you know, and yeah. that is like his comprehensive work. So it was like, it, it just it yeah. made sense to me. Like I, I would, like if I had known. I might maybe oh maybe I should read something else the other things first but I didn't know any better so I was like oh this is yeah 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 <laughs> you know right it's the English it's translation my mind. in other ways you know yeah it's like almost yeah. too, you know, much but I did it anyway uh, anyway so yeah <laughs> I don't think it's a bad thing I think when I first read Kyogyo Shinsho I probably only understood about five percent of it. <laughs> <laughs> but the one but there's parts where you're like it just blows your mind it's like oh that is so true like it just you know yeah. what i mean it yeah. Just yeah. Mind to, to like it just anyway yeah, yeah. zikin sensei a, a jodo shinshu teacher who passed away a quite a number of years ago but he would he used to call kyogo shinshu the the uh it's the book of life because you know everything it's all it, contained in kyogo it, shinshu it's, it's comprehensive yeah. Every every question you have about the Buddha, who is the Buddha? Who are we? What is the point of existence? Uh, what is enlightenment? Every question you have about Buddhism and especially you know Jodo Shinshu and what is the relationship between the primal vow and other Buddhism, you know, it's all contained in Kyogyo Shinshu, you know. So very yeah. important book. And then also um you know, uh, Rinyo Shonin's letters are also important as well. So, yeah, they were. But, uh, yeah, I use this all, all the time. I mean, this is basically my. Um, I can read Japanese pretty well. Not, 
a hundred percent, but you know, I can understand it well enough to basically use this as my main resource. And then I, I tend to refer to English translations as like a, an aid, you know, to okay. help flesh it out. Yeah. I, I imagine it's probably in some ways, if you know, in Japanese probably helps because it, it would simplify some of the, oh, yeah. like when no, you read, you're like, oh, yeah, that's, you know. Yeah, like it, when it I really helps. Little, I'm like, if I, if I have like an intuitive sense of what the Japanese would be, I'm like, it'd be so much simpler to know Japanese to, to understand yeah. this stuff. <laughs> but deep. I do have but, to tell you, <laughs> I do have to tell you, this book is written in very old fashioned Japanese. Uh, yeah. And in most modern Japanese people actually would have to have a hard time reading this. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a um, there's a modern Japanese translation, actually, just like there's an English translation. But but yeah, what is helpful is a lot of times the English translation has some sort of bias or, you know, the translator's opinion is kind of in there. That happens a lot, actually, yeah. even in the collected works of Shinran. So being able to refer to the original is, is really helpful. And if we uh, reading some of those texts, I can probably point out where the original is a bit different from the, you know, the English translation where you might want to um, take note. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. So. Well, listen, thank you so much. It's really been helpful. And I want, you know, can, how often can you do this on a Sunday? Like yeah, a, um, I'm, what, probably not every week. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing, let me look at my calendar. Okay. I think the next time actually, uh, let me see here. Okay, so actually, Next week um, oh. looks like we'll be fine. Okay. So if you want to do the same time next Sunday. Let me just double check with my wife that we're not, that there's not something okay. already. That. But yeah. Okay. Then yeah, let's. Uh, and I'll, Other, I'll... Otherwise, um, the thing is, is I, uh, I, you know, I might have to but I just have a wanna... date with my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. Um, you can send me a send me a message by messenger if it works or not. And if not, we'll find another time. And sometimes I have a, a, um, a weekend where I'm not available. So uh, we'll just have to find a time that will work for okay. both of us. So, right. but yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to talking to you again and continuing our discussion next time too. Definitely, please. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Namo Amida Butsu. Yeah. Namo Amida Butsu. Take, Take care. Bye-bye. See ya.